Good morning, one and all physics students, and welcome to another edition of Physics. It's Mr. Finn coming at you from Neighborly Northville, of course. Hey guys, today I just got a brief little subset on generators. Now you watched your generator video a couple of, or maybe yesterday, and you figured out how generators actually work. What I'm going to do is just talk through another one of those ways to determine how much voltage you can get from the generator. We also discussed the idea of magnetic flux a couple of days ago, too, so this should help with the process. We're going to need to go to the big board. Okay, guys, now remember, this is our generator, or a motor, depending on how you use it. And it's got these brushes, so if I manually turn the spindle, then these two magnets that fit in these slots will um, create a magnetic field going this way. So as this thing turns, it'll be 90 degrees away and then it'll be parallel with the field going through these coils. You can see that the coil area right here, that is what's going to be uh, exposed to the magnetic field. So that's your area vector. And as this thing turns, the rate at which it turns will change the flux greater and greater and greater times per second. So that's the frequency that you have in the generator. And that comes out as you siphon off the energy of these two points. You're going to get voltage based on the position of this spindle at any point in time. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, guys, remember Faraday's Law. Faraday's law suggests that the number of loops was important and the rate of change of the magnetic uh, field within those loops also matters. Well, in our generator equation, this is voltage. This is the induced EMF from the generator. N is the number of loops on the coils. So if it's wrapped around 10 times, N would be 10. Then, B times A, that is our flux value. There's the flux right there. How do we know the flux is changing? Because you have omega. Remember, omega is angular velocity. So, in proportions of a circle, the number of times or how many portions of a circle that spindle makes per second will give you the omega value, angular velocity. So, the angular velocity and the Magnetic flux, that represents the second half of Faraday's law, the rate of change within the magnetic field. The first part of that Faraday's law is represented with the N, the number of loops. That's it, guys. At maximum, the maximum voltage would simply be the number of loops times flux times omega. That's the maximum. What if it's not at maximum? What if we wanted to find a voltage at some certain point in between? Well, that's a little bit more rare, but if you do, sine omega t, again, that's going to be from point to point. If you have a certain percentage of a circle, then the sine of the angular velocity multiplied by the time component will reduce the voltage that's induced by a certain percentage. And that's it. So, generators creating voltage and using Faraday's law as a way of understanding that. The number of loops and the rate of change of the magnetic field within those loops, that is B times A times omega, or B dot A, omega. The change in flux, omega, angular velocity, the flux, the B dot A component. Okay, guys, let's wrap up. Guys, we call that e equation the generator equation. But it's just using Faraday's law to understand how we're working within a spinning spindle, which contains coils and moves within a magnetic field. We'll give it a try. There's a couple homework problems I'd like you to practice on that. Other than that, we should be set on generators. Motors work the same way, just in reverse order. So if a generator uses a moving arm through a changing magnetic field or changing flux to produce a output current, and a motor does the exact same thing in the opposite order. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time.